I have a certified uh, accountant in the building today, Susan Mtana. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Mikali. We will not ignore money matters. December, you know, people don't like to talk about money a lot. Yes. They just want to spend it. Yes. But we are not letting that happen, not this year. After what COVID met Wanyesha, we will save every little penny that we have. Yes. for a better tomorrow sure. but before we get into the conversations that we are getting into right now so maybe you can introduce yourself so that we know even where you're coming from with this conversation okay thank you so much Mwikali. my name is susan tana i'm a certified public accountant of kenya and i'll say i just have passion to train in the areas of finance and management and you find like why personal finance yeah you find even at an individual level anytime you don't have cash you have some little headache like mm. it can destabilize you that is true. and you find as the youth in kenya it's one way it's a it's an area that you're really struggling so i thought how about just creating this awareness making people just the way people can be literate about a certain thing yeah. have them be literate about financial management and that is a good I, th I think even the perspective that you brought out most people will be keen on I have a business how do I run this business where do I put the money how do I put money back into the business yes. but when it comes to personal finance then what on a legeza kamba kidogo yes so why why is this important for us to focus and how do we even go about it you're 20,000 at the end of the month or 50,000 at the end of the month. How am I, how what do I need to know mm -hmm. to be able to just, you know, manage that? Yes. So you cannot manage what you don't, what you don't know. Yes. So in this case, when you talk about personal finances, you are just looking at money management at an individual level. Yes. In this case, do you even know your earnings? We have the people who maybe work and they know at the end of the month, this is what I'm expecting. Yes. But there are people who are in like the Joakali industries mm. or maybe they're in businesses. You ask them, okay, how much do you make in a month? They're like, I don't know. So yeah. you need to know, first of all, how much am I making? But you find like as Kenyans, we are good at spending. Like we really know how to spend rather than even thinking about how to make that money. Yeah. So in this case, and uh, when I talk about personal financial management, I talk about just enlightening you to sit down, understand your earnings, understand your journey. Mm -hmm. I know everybody is at a certain point in their life, yes. but let them understand what are my finances. For example, how am I spending habit? How do mm. I spend? Mostly we live beyond our means and that pushes us to go into debt. So when I look at my debt statement, you know, I can say maybe Nikona Denia Mwikali, but I may not like literally think, think of it as a debt. I'm just looking at the bank loan as a mm. debt. But you find even that affects your day-to-day -day personal financial planning. We talk about savings and investments because there is a life today. And if you pray for long life, for example, you want to have a good life post-retirement. So what are you doing about that? Maybe right now you don't have a family, but at one point you may be having a family. So you find all those factors, they just lingle around the issue mm. of personal finances. And if you don't have an insight to watch where you are at as an individual you cannot manage what you don't know that is so true yes so now that we know mm -hmm. from that point yes how then what are some of the habits that we need to have to be able to manage our finances well okay i'll talk about two broadly okay. Okay. one i say spend less than what you earn okay. for example if you're earning a hundred thousand we clearly don't go ahead and spend the hundred thousand. You won't have anything to save at the end of the day. And we have a principle we say like pay yourself first. So, you know, we think of rent as a bill, food yes. as a bill, but we forget that I need to pay myself first. And paying myself first is not kurudisha mwili shukran, it's not that <laughs> rich. It's about saving into your future, putting money aside to help you in, in a rainy day. So in this case, you need to spend below what you earn. And uh, that will make room for you to save and also it will make you avoid debt. Because if you overspend, if your spending is more than what you earn, it means it will push you to go into debt. Mm. So in this case, I'll normally tell people, spend less than what you earn or live below your means so that you have room for you to have some saving. And also in terms of spending, maybe we'll talk about that when we talk about budgeting and all that, yes. but there's the bit of spending. So most of us, we are very good at the spending bit, mm -hmm. but in terms of the saving, the, the spending and the debt bit, just going into loans, 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 we are so good. So I'll say that is the first key. 
Okay. Yes. Okay. And when we, because when, when you talk about us being able to save then and paying ourselves, mm -hmm. and I like the fact that you said, yes. because I saw a meme going around. Mm -hmm. It's December and this two memes are everywhere. Yes. Ati, I am stuck between saving for the future and mm -hmm. you only live once. You know, yes. where you want to. I don't know if I'm going to be there tomorrow. Yes, I'm praying for a long life. Mm -hmm. But then I just want to enjoy whatever it is that I can enjoy now. Mm -hmm. And clearly, if you find yourself past retirement, mm -hmm. then you go back to, you know, your state and you see Missouri sana. Yeah. But when you talk about budgeting, how am I able to, are there percentages that will help me mm -hmm. to be able to know if I'm, han I'm, I'm earning the 100,000 that you talked about, mm -hmm. then what do I, what percentage do I keep aside? How do I just break it down? Okay, thank you for that, Mwikali. So I'll say, assuming you're earning 100,000, first of all, I want you to think net and not gross. Yes. You know, like if you are earning 100,000 in Kenya, there'll be deductions and mm. you'll end up with less than that. Mm. So in this case, when you're talking about 100,000, you are thinking about net after the pay as you earn or if you're in business, like after all the business costs and all that. Yes. So if you have 100,000, we have guiding principles, but I'll say it's not like, um, it's good to follow but not, don't be rigid depending on your situation. Yes. So we really advise to have at least the 50, 30, and 20 rule. So for the 50, we are saying you need to categorize as you list down all your expenses. You know your expenses. Yeah. Then categorize like what are the must-haves? What are the needs? What are the needs that if I don't spend on them, I cannot survive or they're crucial to my survival? That's like rent. Yes. So, for example, you need rent, you need food. If you don't eat, you'll starve. You'll die. And we'll, you'll die, yeah. Yes. So you find, like, the 50% allocated for the must-haves, the thing that you cannot do without. For example, you need to come to work. Either you are driving, you need fuel, either it's matatu, you need transport. So that is, like, a must-have because it is one way that will help you to earn the income. Mm -hmm. So the must-haves allocate 50%. Okay. Why 50%? We are saying maybe assuming on a bad day, maybe like you see the way COVID came and mm. things were bad. It is easy to try and raise the 50 percent and have the must haves okay. catered for. And then we have the 30 percent window. So the 30 percent, I'll say it is for once. The things like maybe for your luxury, maybe you want to subscribe to Netflix. Mm. Maybe you want to go for entertainment and such kind. So you can have that 30 percent of your net be okay. allocated to that and then we have the 20 percent so the 20 percent is the one you are saying paying yourself first mm. that is the saving because you are saying you need to save you need and you find like in can you've been brought up in that culture whereby you just like uh, you find at the time maybe you got your first salary maybe the saving thing was not in your mind mm -hmm. so there is that bit it's more of i'll say a mindset issue but you really need it so i'll say it depends with your individual plans for example let me give this for yes. those Christians who believe in tithing, somebody yes. will ask, like, Susan, where should I get that 10%, for example? So for that person who believes that I need to tithe, so from the 100,000, let them pay God first. Then whatever remains, now they apportion it to the mm. 50, 30, 20. Okay. Maybe you are there, you're asking, Susan, I have a loan. So you find maybe some loans are like check off. So even mm. whatever comes is after the loan has already been so deducted. So still, whatever remains is what I do, the 50, 30, 20. Yes. Okay, yes. I, I like that because then you will not interfere after you've deducted everything mm -hmm. that needs to be deducted, whatever remains. Yes. That is what you use with the 50, 30, 20. And at what point mm -hmm. do we do that? Do I do it after now? Mm -hmm. Or when the money comes in, do I pay myself first? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. Or do I just wait? You know, kuna yoku tu yanda safe tu na pesa itabaki. Ocha ni kumbi ya kuna kitu itabaki. Kuna siku pesa itatosha. Because have you realized that it's like, a, okay, at times we do jokes like, unasema kwani watu wa menunsa mpesa yangu. It's like mm. the moment salary comes in, there are emergencies. And emergencies will never end. Yeah. So once you get that salary, take the 20% and keep it aside. And one thing I want you to understand is that uh, the 20% saving is really affected by the degree of debt because we'll tell you avoid debt because if you don't have loans, it means you'll have a bigger room capacity to save. So it means your net will be high and it will enable you to, to save more. So mm -hmm. I'll say once 
that money lands into your account. Mm -hmm. I have a colleague who says, Mshara ikigia na sema nasikia kiburi imepanda. Eh, then see him after two days. Kabejimeza by the way. <laughs> yes. Chris was like, what is that? Yes. <laughs> then after two days, he's like, eh, my friend, ata maragwe pia ni chakula. So, kiburi inashuka. Unasema, ah, ni, ni vizuri kukua humble. So, I'll say, in this uh, life that you are living, yeah. money will never... You find even the millionaires, the billionaires, they keep on looking for money. Mm -hmm. So I say money is enticing and it will never be enough. So you just need to be, to understand yourself in my financial journey. Where am I at as mm -hmm. Susan? Mm -hmm. So as Mikali will say, okay, this is where am I at? And you decide like, let me take the 20% I put it aside. Yes. Then you can decide to play around with the 30% because the 30% is more of maybe entertainment issues and you'll be like, or maybe you need to support you know, the social capital. Mm. Eh, kuna baby shower mahali. Yeah. You need maybe to support. There's a funeral arrangement somewhere. Maybe there's a medical uh, fund drive somewhere. So that 30% is what you can try to play with. You can decide, okay, instead of 30, maybe let me squeeze a 10% I add to the savings and maybe reduce on my, mm. let me, let me, let me, let me forego maybe going for golf. Yes. And channel that to saving. Yeah, you can okay. manipulate with the thirty percent for entertainment. Uh, hey, me, I hope you guys are taking notes because it's Christmas and these conversations. You come in and in a talker. I mean, in in a car. But we will still continue having these conversations because they are needed. We're talking about your personal financing. How do you manage your own money? Have you encountered, you know, hurdles along the way when you're trying to, you know, save? And some people will be like, my business is not, you know, up and running yet. It's not consistent. I'm not able to put money on the side as much as I, I'm not able to pay myself. What questions do you have when it comes to matters, personal finances, budgeting, debts and all of that put together you can send in your questions to us because susan will be here after the break to answer all of them and the sms line is triple one triple four triple one and it's just going to cost you a shilling to do that find us on social media switch tv k on instagram switch tv kenya on facebook we'll be right back after this break come back to full circle with Wikali. how are you doing we are talking matters finances how do you manage your finances and what are the, some of the challenges that you have undergone while trying to do the same what are you struggling with when it comes to you know debts loans budgeting saving you know even making that business uh, you know up and running triple one triple four triple one that is our sms line sending all of your questions because susan is here to answer all of them and there's uh, someone who's uh, responding to that question on our facebook mocha jim says uh, tanariva madogo to collect i think if a person fails to manage his or her money most definitely money might do the management and when it does mambo huaribika manake huakazi ni kuzitumia tu bila mpango and i think that is exactly what you were saying yes. but when you talk about debts and loans growing mm -hmm. up uh, you'd hear our parents saying they raised you na loans mm -hmm. ilikuwa huyu akimaliza anachukua mwingine hizo loans mm -hmm. na you'll find some being encouraged Usiogope loans, mm -hmm. chukua tu loans. Yeah. And I also encountered a gentleman who once told me that unajua pesa yako inasaidia watu ingine when you save it in the bank. So how about you use other people's money as well to get <laughs> loans and, you know, grow yourself in mm -hmm. that way. So when we talk about loans and debts, what are the kinds of debts that we should be getting into and which ones shouldn't we be getting into? Okay. Thank you, Mukali. I'll say the issue about debt, it's more of a... A mindset thing yes. because if you believe that you cannot do without debt then that is what will happen mm. so in this case I'll say uh, rule number one is avoid debt yes but if you can't avoid it or you are already in it then uh, I'd like you to think through it like um, what made you go through the to go into debt because you find like uh, currently somebody tells you like I don't have money for suffer let me try go to M Shwari. Mm. So somebody gets into debt in order to survive. You need to use your income to survive. So of course there is a bad debt. Okay. So I'll say bad debt is any debt that you get into uh, to either acquire as an asset that will be having um, the value reducing, depreciating in time. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you find like, for example, you've gone for 500,000 and the asset that you've bought, maybe it's something that loses value. Mm -hmm. So at the end of it, you won't pay back the bank the 500,000. You'll pay it with interest. The other thing I'll say is... Um, Okay, let me maybe go to the, the side of a good debt. Maybe they say no <laughs> debt is good, but in case we are to have a good debt, I'll say if you go into debt, for example, maybe you want to do an investment. So what you need to consider is what is the return 
-hmm. on this investment. Yeah. If I'm to take a debt of 500,000 and invest maybe and earn 200,000 in return. So the return will be 200,000. But how much interest am I paying to the bank? So if there'll be a trade off whereby the income you get mm -hmm. from investing the debt is higher than the cost of financing the debt. Plus, mm -hmm. you know, there is inflation. Yes. If I told you to, it's a long term debt, maybe four years, five years, you need to look at inflation. So in that case, you're looking at the time value for money and also is the income that I get, the interest income or the investment income higher enough to cover for the principal debt amount and the interest in it. Otherwise, if it is the reverse, then there's nothing, there's nothing you're doing. You're just digging a ditch yourself. Mm -hmm. And you find like we have a rat race. Like, uh, for example, maybe the salary comes in. You have maybe a salary advance. It's swallowed. So you go into debt. Then you remember like I cannot meet even the must-haves. I cannot meet my needs. You go into debt. Mm -hmm. to maybe Timiza, you pick Timiza to pay Tala, then you borrow from Tala to reduce Mshwari. So I'll say in that case, what you need to do is debt management. Yes. You need to just be true to yourself like I'm in a stressful situation. I made mistakes. And funny thing, you may find somebody, they have a pay slip. Maybe the pay slip says they have a, a, a million balance to the bank. You ask them, what did you do with this debt? They cannot even account for it. Mm. Yeah. So you find there are so many factors you need to consider. Like you'll be told like you, are, you, you have a good credit score. So Mikali, you can take this amount. Or maybe you have some savings in the circle and they tell you can take three times. So mm. some people will just get enticed like, oh, I want three times. But had you budgeted enough, had you maybe thought through and uh, planned how to spend that and to ensure that you earn the income, the returns will be more than yes. what you, you are just getting yourself into. Mm -hmm. Do you know the interest rates? Mm -hmm. Do you know like the nitty gritties? Are there any additional charges? So for me, I'll say there is no good debt, but if there needs to be one, then the income that you'll receive after investing that debt should be higher than the cost of finance. You know, I realized there's no good debt when you said, let me talk about the good debt. And by the time you were done explaining the good debt, we were already bad debting. Yes. <laughs> so I was like, wasn't that supposed to be a good debt? Mm -hmm. But then there's also that side of it. So we've seen people who get into loans to take their children to mm -hmm. school and yes. stuff. So they tie that up with their salary. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you would recommend because it's needed, but you don't have money for that? Yeah, I'll say sometimes we go into debt because of circumstances. And yeah. I'll say we come from different backgrounds. That's true. So maybe one can survive without it, one mm -hmm. can survive without it. But I'll say like uh, right now, okay, maybe for those who are not yet there, maybe your kid is in grade five. Yes. You know, at one point, this child will have to go to high school. Yes. What can you do now to ensure that when that time comes, you have something? Can mm -hmm. you, we have the account for children, the junior accounts. Can you start saving? So you find like if you are consuming everything, you'll end up into debt. But if you start saving early, and let me address, maybe there's somebody who did not do the saving, and right now they have to take their kids to school. Maybe it's, um, I say like right now you have the short terms, mm. like in a year. So I'll say, find maybe, like try to do a comparison in the market. For example, are you in a circle? Because one thing I know is circle loans are way cheaper yes. than maybe other financial issues. So just do a research on yourself and like see where can I go and borrow this money? Where can I get the favorable interest rate? But if at all you have children, start planning for them early, early. enough. Yes. And I think it goes back to where this conversation started in terms mm -hmm. of planning. Yes. Being able to see what it is that you will need in the future and mm -hmm. being able to prepare for it now yes. and when you talk about preparing for the future then we can't talk about that without talking about retirement sure <laughs> because <laughs> we uh, we hope like we said we are hoping and praying mm -hmm. for a long life yes so if we get there sometimes back in the day likua or towangun your retirement plan mm -hmm. but then that has slowly changed over the years where you want to be able to take care of yourself and mm -hmm. your partner uh, at that age yes so what are some of the you know places or things that people can do to just ensure that retirement mm -hmm. is taken care of and it's it, it's okay for you to start now yes you finished university mm -hmm. but you can start thinking about your retirement now yes so i'll say immediately you get your job <laughs> just yeah. try to start planning for your retirement and uh, i'll say um 
think about it this way. I think it's the other day it was in the media about the man who went to sue his son. Like I educated my son and all that, and now I'm not living a I'm living a not so good life. So that is like you find he's he's in the age of retirement, like he's retired. So ask yourself, like Susan, right now I'm 32 years. So like if I'm to retire at 60, if that's the retirement age, how many years do I have to still work? And what kind of life? do i want when i retire because you find like in the corporate world for example you'll be given medical cover mm. you'll be living in town you'll be having all that good life maybe you are driving but by the time you come to retire mm -hmm. what kind of life do you want to live where yes. do you want your home to be do you have a home in nairobi or do you have to go to the village all your life it's like you've lived in nairobi so going to the village to readjust you don't have friends you don't have social circle there so you find like you'll just die chances are high because you just readjusting, imagine, yes. And then even living in a place that you were not used to. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you need to think about what is the kind of life I want to live mm -hmm. uh, post-retirement. And that can help you now start planning, do retirement planning. For example, you can talk about maybe I want to retire. In, I come from Mombasa. So I'll say my shags is in Mombasa. I want to retire in Mombasa. So do I have a home there? Mm -hmm. What can I do? Can I start putting up a home and one thing let me mention you find like people invest so much in um uh in assets that are not liquid you'll find like yes somebody has a home they've retired they have a home but they need money to to yes. keep on running so make a balance create a balance on uh, uh ensuring you have liquid assets at the point of retirement so that you can also have cash when you talk about liquid assets mm -hmm. what do you mean so I'll say maybe try to do some savings. You can save maybe in the money market funds, okay. for example, mm -hmm. whereby you can easily access cash. So yes, have the home, which is good. At least you have shelter, but you know you'll need food. You don't want to rely on your, on your children. You need medical, so you need cash at that point. Ask yourself like, um, okay, there's this, they say the, the, there's this rule that uh, if at all, ask yourself, pro try to project your income, your monthly income by the time you retire. So let's say running, right now maybe you're earning 50,000. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the next 20 or so years, you'll be earning, let's say, 150. Mm -hmm. So calculate 70% of that and ensure that you have income streams post retirement that'll be giving you 70 percent of your income at least you find falling from 100 to 70 mm. is not bad enough but otherwise you want to come from a salary just imagine even if you miss your salary for one month mm. it's it's stressful so mm -hmm. how about you don't have that salary and you find like sometimes people are give, given that lump sum maybe they saved somewhere or maybe there was that employer pension and all that and they just don't have an idea on how to manage it they get excited yeah. they throw parties and after two months they're back to to it so uh, i'll say if possible you can um try to do uh, retirement planning ask yourself when do i want to retire maybe not necessarily 60. what kind of life do i want what is, like try to project your monthly expenses you need medical cover by then then in that case you can try saving maybe in bonds in you can decide to have a mix also we have something in finance we call about diversification don't mm -hmm. pull, put all your eggs in one basket so we have different mutual funds different pension schemes so you can try and see where can i save this money and even at this point you find there are some uh, any tax benefits mm -hmm. when you save for retirement so look for those uh, maybe old mutual for example or maybe some pension funds you mm -hmm. save i'll say i'll advise go to the retirement benefits authority website and see the licensed so that you're not conned yeah. in this area in this area yeah so try to save maybe save in circles and try project the life you want to have and start building towards it I think that's brilliant yes. for us to learn that that right now before. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're very lucky if you're hearing this conversation and you just got your first job, then you can start now. It's not too early for you to be thinking about that. It's just one of those things that you don't really want to struggle with when yes. you're older. And I also love the fact that you separated investing mm -hmm. and, you know, having liquid mm -hmm. cash, uh, cash yes. because mm -hmm. you might have lands all over Kenya. Yes. You're very rich mm -hmm. in terms of that. Yes. But then again, if you do not have money for daily, Spending, then it becomes yeah. very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. And so when, when, when you retire, mm -hmm. what happens then? Is it that you're given all your money at once mm -hmm. or is it now you can make arrangements for you to be, mm -hmm. you know, getting money monthly, monthly for yes. yourself? What mm -hmm. happens? What's the arrangement at that time if you've put your money in one of those places that you've said we can? So I'll say that is all guided by the contracts that you'll get into. Mm -hmm. So you can say like, for example, I want annuities or I want uh, like um, there's that lump sum that I'll get, but I want to be given monthly. 
okay. my year monthly to have monthly cash stipend mm -hmm. or you can say maybe i'll do yearly so it just depends on the kind of investment plan you take and i'll say the investment advisor will give you like the different options that you that you have you want to redeem monthly it's possible you want to redeem annually mm -hmm. it's still possible but since we are used to at least getting money assuming you are <laughs> okay we have those who are maybe in the civil service they're permanent and pensionable maybe somebody's at the juakali level right now asking me like susan how is that possible yeah i don't have pension from my employer or even from the work i'm doing so in that case there are so many there are some private entities that will you'll come into that arrangement you save mm -hmm. for the pension fund one thing i'll say with the like for example the work of covid yes. and all that try to ask them what happens just get it clear from the word go suppose i cannot contribute this amount per month mm. maybe due to covid due to job loss is my am i saving secure or that is the time you'll tell me because you've had the instances maybe people go and get insurance policies maybe life premium, premium and all that then after some time maybe they lose employment they can no longer contribute towards it and they're being told maybe you did not meet the condition of this so you cannot access or we can only give you a certain amount so just ask them as many questions as possible and just ensure that it's working towards your favor. Yes. Yes. So you don't end up losing everything. Everything, yes. So something else that happens with old age because we are there is that we get really sick. Mm -hmm. uh, you, your body does not function as it used to be. Yes. So that means hospitality and mm. insurances that are needed at that point are probably not what we are using now mm -hmm. when we're young and maybe you can maybe guide us on what some of the insurances that people should be able to take in now mm -hmm. or later to just help them navigate that mm -hmm. time okay one thing i'll say right now the key thing is the medical insurance if you have it from the employer that is fine but if you don't have it ensure that we okay we know we have the nhif but if you can supplement that because i think uh, we've come to realize like uh, being healthy and in good health is really mm. a gift from god so i'll advocate for medical insurance the other thing i'll advocate for is um just have a pension plan it's more of, yeah, some insurance companies have it. Okay. So, yeah, plan for that. The other thing I'll say is more of now coming to school fees issues, mm. education mm. policies and mm. all that. One thing I'll say, like, there are so many good investment opportunities out there. But I'll say, as they are telling you this is what you will earn, get to understand the time value for, for money. Because you are not just putting that money there. You are not just giving them money to trade. You want your money also to give you something in return because you've sacrificed, you, you've denied yourself some comfort to, to, to save that money with them. So just get to understand how much will I get. Then try to, because I'll say uh, a shilling, we say a shilling today is not the same as a shilling tomorrow. Mm. So it is so easy. I tell you, Mwikali, like we can have maybe an um, insurance policy of you'll pay 5,000 a month. After maybe a certain period, you'll redeem 20 million. You understand? Yes. But when you calculate the amount that you have contributed mm -hmm. plus the interest they'll be giving you, then factor in issues about inflation. Is the value of that money what? Well, because it can be 20 million years, but yes. maybe compared to the present value, find like it's just like the principal amount you, you, you gave in. them. Yeah. So those are things you can, you can consider. Uh, the other bit I'll talk about is um, just the life premium. Yeah, just ensuring, okay, maybe let me talk about this, uh, for example, personal accident cover. Not every employer covers you to just against personal accident. Ask yourself, suppose I'm incapacitated today due to something happens. How am I going to survive? So maybe I need an insurance against personal accident, um, against incapacitation and all that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we talk about saving and planning, mm -hmm. it feels like, especially if you're, when you're young, mm -hmm. it feels like you need loads of money for you to save. But that is what we're saying, that it's not a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So when you count back, if you started saving at the age of maybe 18, when you got your first job, or uh, 20, mm -hmm. 22, it can maybe 2,000 every month, mm -hmm. 2,000. 2000 towards retirement mm -hmm. i think that would be a lot of money i think it's it's sure. heavier on people who are starting on later yes. that becomes really really heavy on them because now you are racing against time you mm -hmm. you're earning you have children yes school fees and maybe at happen. that point you have lifestyle diseases yes you already <laughs> yeah. are there mm -hmm. so it becomes very very heavy so i think it is key for the young people who are just tuned in and you're thinking i see that you start now 
so that it be gets better. Be intentional. Be very intentional with mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And you will see. It will be very, very easier at the end of it all. And we are coming to the end of this conversation. Mm -hmm. I don't know what your parting shot would be mm -hmm. uh, to anyone who's watching today. And this is your camera. Okay. Thank you so much. I'll say um, even as much as we go to look for money, don't lose the things that money cannot buy. Because at times you can sacrifice your family and everything because you want to earn more, you want and uh, end up losing the things that also matter more. So try to create a balance. And I'll say thank you so much. You can follow me on my YouTube channel, Susan the Trainer KE. Thank you for hosting me. Absolutely. Next time. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming through. Mm -hmm. it, it was a beautiful Monday conversation. Yes. It's a beautiful Monday conversation. And you know something else that's beautiful is that I... I have some goodies for you, courtesy of Rock Industries. Now, Rock Industries is one of the leading, you know, manufacturing industries that are based in Kenya. And they produce household plastics, barbed wire, chain links, candles, you know, all those beautiful things that you can have in your house. Yes, they do that. And they have very high quality raw materials. And guess what? They're also very, very, very affordable. So today... They are ensuring that each one of you, if you do what I ask, will walk away with some goody goodies courtesy of Rock Industries. And all you have to do is let us know what it is that you have in your house that you got from Rock Industries. Was it a candle? Was it a plate? Was it a bowl? Was it a basin? What was it? Is it that fence? What did you get from Rock Industries that you have in your home? Text us to text that to us. Triple one, triple four, triple one, and that will cost you just one shilling, and you might ch st you stand a chance to walk away with some amazing, beautiful goodies from Rock Industries. So get texting. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs>